Hello everyone and welcome to the forest. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and today we're talking about that all too important stage of a plant's life cycle, seed dispersal. Now that is how plants migrate. That's how they conquer new territories and there's many variations on that theme. So come on, let's go see what we can find. So this tall bone site here is demonstrating one of the most obvious forms of seed dispersal wind dispersal. The technical term for that is a nemocori, and the adaptations are pretty obvious. If you look at every individual seed, it comes complete with a little tuft of hairs that catch the wind kind of like a parachute, and boy is it effective. <laughs> wind dispersal is one of the most long-range dispersal mechanisms that plants have evolved, and in fact, wind dispersed species like this plant right here are some of the first to invade heavily disturbed habitats. It's pretty remarkable the amount of variations that they have on this across the globe. In fact, we could do an entire series devoted to just that, but let's go see what else we can find. Ah, my cords! Ah, I have unintentionally demonstrated yet another form of seed dispersal. This one being animal dispersal or zoocory. Now, in this case, I'm the animal, but most of the time they're looking for deer, rabbits, coyotes, raccoons, you name it. If it's got fur, these little birds will stick to it. Now, this is what we call beggar's lice, and these birds really get onto everything and really can make your day quite annoying. Don't even get me started on if you accidentally have one of these go through the wash. But you can see how effective this form of seed dispersal can really be. In fact, it's burrs like these, though not this species in particular, that inspired Velcro. They have tiny little hooks on the ovaries, and inside each one of these is a couple of seeds so that when I go and brush them off, they found a new spot that hopefully is suitable for their germination. It's pretty annoying, but uh, you kind of have to respect it. My poor cords. Hmm. Now there's got to be another good example of animal dispersers around here somewhere. Oh, perfect. Now you don't need to stick your seeds to an animal in order to use them as effective seed dispersers. Sometimes you can just offer them enough food and they'll do the rest of the work for you. Now in the case of things like acorns, as we saw in our acorn video, or even walnuts, they offer nutritious nut meat that the things like squirrels and other rodents desperately need to get themselves through the winter. And as they cache them, they inevitably forget some, and that's how these find their way into the next generation. Now, this is probably the more basic form of animal dispersal, but as we'll see in a little bit here, there's even more intense ways of using animals with food. Perfect. So I've come out here to this little patch of prairie to show you yet another interesting form of seed dispersal that involves animals. Albeit this might be one that's so familiar to us that we easily overlook it. This is obviously a fruit. And fruits are all about seed dispersal. Now this belongs to what we call a horse nettle. It's a relative of the tomato and the potato. But the fact remains the same that these brightly colored fleshy fruits are there to attract animals like raccoons, possums, coyotes, in order for them to ingest their fruits, take the seeds with them, and then go deposit them elsewhere. Now, not only do they get deposited in a nutrient-rich supply of dung, the seeds themselves actually benefit from passing through the gut of an animal. The strong stomach acids wear away at the tough outer seed coat, which, when things start to warm up and water becomes available again, will allow water to enter into the embryo and allow uh, germination to take place. It's a marvel of evolution, and again, it's so familiar to us that we overlook it, because I don't know about you, but I sure do love fruit. 